What's that for? Oh, I don't want it. You eat it. Well, I don't want it either. Bad enough. Eat it. I don't like sausages. Why? Why are you always giving me your leftovers? Because you're my husband, and husbands are dustbins. Everybody knows that. Yeah, well, why can't you just leave it? You know very well why I can't just leave it. Come on now, get your breakfast down. <laughs> you are not having your skin and bone. Yeah, she's right and all. Oh. Will you still love me when I'm 64 stone? Yeah, of course I will. Oh, oh hey. Don't you two ever do out house but kiss each other? Yeah, but we're not going to tell you what. <laughs> Come on, you're going to tell a lot, you kids. When I think what I was like at your age... Yeah, you was married at her age, you've told me. Yes, I know I was married, but I still behaved myself. Especially in front of me elders and betters. Oh, you cheeky young madam. <laughs> hey, I got your washing machine, though, didn't I? Yeah, you did, love. And I must say, it's a godsend. Flipping sight better than traipsing down to the laundrette. Yeah, I'll wash them in the sink. Yeah, I'll wash them in the sink. Now, with a bit of luck, that load should be ready by the time I come back from the Rovers, so I'll get it pegged out and then I'll put your bed in it. If there's anything else you want to go in, just make sure you leave it where I can find it. No, oh, I've uh, got my blue sweater out upstairs, but I forgot to bring it down. I'll leave it on the banister for you. Oh, they're an ignorant lot, aren't they, Chuck? I don't put your best woolies in the machine. They have to be hand-washed. Mm. No, no, you didn't know that, did you? No. I'll tell you what you can do. After you've washed his sweater, don't wing it out, and I'll hang it on line about shoulders like they do. You what? Oh, you're worse than him, you. You do that little stretch of mine, it'll come down to his knees. <laughs> oh, mine. And if I wear my new gold belt with it, woo! Oh, <laughs> by the heck, you want to keep your eye on this one. <laughs> mm. I always do, Mrs. O. Can't do nothing else. And you'd better not start either. Yeah. Got myself a right little cracker there, didn't I, Mrs. O? Oh, yeah. she knows that. Yes, that I do. But you can stop preening yourself, madam. You didn't do so bad, neither. I know. I love him, even if he's my husband. And just to prove it, Mrs Ogden, when you give me one of them lovely sausages for my breakfast tomorrow, I'm going to give it to him. Now, what do you think of that? A greater love hath no woman. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd gone off him. Oh, Martin. Mm. Well, yeah, for a bit. But he's not a bad lad. Got on quite well, actually. So I gathered. It had turned eleven bit time he finally opted. it. And I'm not sure I like him going up to your bedroom. I know your cassette player's up there, but you could always bring it down here. What? I know you complaining about the row. Anyway, what's wrong with taking him up to my bedroom? I always take Debbie up when she comes. Well... Yeah, I know, cos she's a girl and he's a lad. Very much difference, really, you know. All we do is play cassettes and talk a bit. He's very interested. I'm sure he is. Now, look at it from my point. I'm only looking after you. It's your dad I'm thinking about. I have to pretend that I'm him. Well, great. You pretend you're him, pretend Martin's debit, and that's it, isn't it? We've cracked it. Too clever by far, you kids. Hmm, yeah, you don't like being being at your age, do you? And too cheeky and all. Morning. Morning, Martin. Morning. Morning. Cheers. Martin. I'll just put it on to give you that youth meat safe, I promise you. Oh, ta. Sam. Fat. You can walk me to school if you want. Thanks. Save me from the morning muggers. Gotta go to work. Like Debbie does. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, them kids. Best day's work I ever did in my life, letting them lodge with me. They keep you young, you know. Do they? Nip out and get me a couple. What for? You behaving like a lovesick kid yourself? No, yeah, well done. Where's Betty? She's in back making coffee. Oh. Nip through till you've arrived. Will you make a start on the living room while you're there, love? Right. Oh, morning, Betty. Morning, Hilda. Your coffee's on the draining board, love. The water's only just boiled. Right, thank you kindly. OK, love. Where's my biscuit? You never have a biscuit. I'm breaking the pattern, aren't I? It's time something got brought round here. All right. Do you want one? No, I want two. One cream, one chocolate. Oh, blimey. Oh, I've got it. Uh, Rover's return. Oh, hello, it's you. What did you want, Bet? Oh, hang on a minute. Right, that's five, three, two, one. Right, got it. What name? Oh. Are you sure you don't want to have a word with that? She's here. No. Right, thank you. Who <laughs> hey, with that cock brewery? No. 
Who must think he owns it? Your pal Alec. He says if you want to know more about that pickpocket in that which he suggested, you can get him on this number. His name's Richardson. Did he not want to speak to me? No. No. And before you go on at me, I asked him twice. Something gone wrong? Oh. Right, whichever way you look at it. Oh, I don't know, Betty. I'm the last person to ask. I'm not like you and the rest of them, thinking he were only after me for the pub. But at the same time, I can't see what else he could be after me for. And that's what I told him. I said we could still be best of mates, but... Well, from the way he's behaving, that doesn't seem to be what he wants. So what does that mean? He's serious. He's kidding again. Oh, I'm getting too old for this sort of caper. Well, you weren't serious about him, though, were you? Well, why not? He made me laugh. There's a heck of a lot to be said for a fella that can do that. Mm. Did you not have a giggle or two with your Cyril? Yeah, of course we did. That's why it lasted so long. Well, there you go then. You know what it's all about. It covers a multitude of sins, does that? Mm. I'm not kidding myself. If we'd have got itch, there'd have been waves crashing on shore, a lightning flashing. But we could have enjoyed ourselves. We could have got dolled up, gone on town, and kidded on with Mary Mary S. Staley Bridge. <laughs> hey, knowing him, we'd have got away with it. <laughs> Not going out, though, is it? He weren't doing much laughing when he left here last night. I still think it's all for the best, love. Do us a favour, Cock. Well, stick that in the microwave for a minute. Right. Oh, love. Hey, out the lovely. It's a good job you're not a window cleaner. What's that? Because you're all a stood back admiring your own work. It does, man. It's she said. Yeah, lots of good it does to me, doesn't it? Hey, is it right what I hear? You're getting paid extra for making them things. Only if you finish them on time. It's normally enough with something special. Come on, it's happened before either. Well, why can't the rest of us have a spare share? Yeah. Don't talk, said Dad. We're still doing old mm. stuff, aren't we? Mm. That's his bread and butter, love. I mean, for all we know, this stuff might never even reach shops. Yeah, it's only naturally to his best machine. It's on a job like this. I mean, it's not daft. Oh, not when it suits you. Well, everybody's daft when it suits me. Morning, ladies. Morning. Morning. How are the samples going? All right. Well, at least we're hoping to have them all done by tomorrow afternoon. Great. Hey, and I've just been telling them it's because you've got best machine, it's some job. <laughs> Must be Vera. <laughs> hey, um, how about getting your husband some of these for us? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he'd be delighted. What do you mean? Well, no, what? He'd be delighted to model these for us. <laughs> do you want to stand here cracking jokes all day, or do you want to hear the latest news on the project? Oh, we want to hear the latest news, don't we, girls? Oh, yeah. You do. You're getting paid for it. We could all be getting paid for it. I've just been on to one or two retail outlets, see if there's any interest in this sort of stuff, and I've got a very positive feedback. So come on, let's get on with it, shall we? Don't want them knocking on the door for the merchandise and we've got nothing ready for them. Well, don't you think that we now, are... Don't you jump the gun. Like I said, let's get cracking, get the samples out. And all I want for you to do is to fill the order books. And who knows, may I may all finish up with a few extra bob. They're a very good idea, these boxes, you know, and I shall tell you why. Because a lot of people get embarrassed with tipping. I mean, actually handing the money over. But putting it in a box is different, isn't it? it it's sort of uh, impersonal. You do get my drift, do you, maybe? Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't always tip in of any sort. Why should you pay some extra for doing the job right? Knock a bit off if you get bad service. Now, that's fair enough. I think you shut up. It's got nothing to do with you. I mean, this isn't your average tipping, is it? I mean, this is Christmas, season of goodwill. Time to show your appreciation for all the happy hours you've spent in here and all the laughs you've had. What laughs? told you, shut up. How about it, Mary? I'm sorry I'm short of change. Yes, take my tip. You leave it that way and all. Seems everybody's short of change is now in the box. You think you're flaming clever, you, don't you? Well, I open that every night and you should have seen the amount I got out of it yesterday. So you did. See, they're all outgoing folk round here. Present company accepted. All nice, warm, generous, warm-hearted. I'd leave money and just say, um, it's a bigger impression if you can rattle some it. What, so one of you saw those good flaming nickets on your bike? Oh, she's a lovely writer, isn't she, Gloria? Mm. Yeah, having a nice time by the sound of it. Yeah. Oh, they're all over the world at the moment, aren't they? I mean, Gloria in Toronto, Alan in Dubai. <laughs> Has Rita heard from him? Yeah, she had a letter this morning. Oh, lovely. Oh, that's what I said, but seemingly I, I put my foot in it, as mm. usual. Well, apparently he's been asked to stay on, like, have his contract extended, which is good in many ways, yeah. but of course Rita's missing him. Aww. So... She didn't know whether to be happy for him or sad for herself. Oh, poor love. Mm. Still, we've all got us cross to bear, haven't we? Hey, do you want another? No, thanks, love, doll. I've just filled the bill. It's not that I don't like working at Mrs Lowther's, but, well, it's not an easy house to clean. Oh, I know, you told me. Still, she's very good to me at Christmas, bless her. I always get a nice tip. Hey, you 
talking of tips, Aunt Jack, don't we've got a box at the Robertsford staff? Mm. Well, are you included in that? Oh, yeah, I'm included for what it's worth. Mind you, if I'm any judge, nobody will put them out in. And knowing Jack Duckworth, he'll walk off with a lot. <laughs> that doesn't say much for your share, that, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't, does it? Yes? This is Ogden. That's right. Is Sally Webster in? S Sally Seddon, as was. I'm a relative. You've not come to make trouble for her, have you? I hope not. I'm hoping she'll be glad to see me. Oh, you best come in, then. <coughs> ah. You go on through. All right. <laughs> oh! Uncle Tom! Oh. Ah, it's grand to see you, love. Oh, this is me Uncle Tom, Mrs Ogden. He's me very favourite uncle. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. I didn't let you know, did I? I didn't let you know I was getting married. No, you did not. Oh. You could have knocked me down with a feather when your mother told me. Sally's mother's my sister. Oh, I just yeah. popped round on one of my duty calls. I didn't stay. <laughs> my Uncle Tom don't get on with me, Dad. Oh, well, he's one of us, then. <laughs> Here, sit yourself down, I'll get you for oh, the tea. thanks very much. Stay and see mm. Kevin, Uncle Tom. He won't be long. He worked overtime on last night. Oh, you like Kevin? I doubt it, Mrs Ogden. He's married me girlfriend. Oh. That's the washing up done. Do you fancy a trip out, Cocker? Oh, yeah, where? Well, I thought I'd order some flower arrangements for Christmas. Brewery's told me to spend a bit. Mm. I suppose the best shop to go would be that place where Eddie Yates' wife used to work. Oh, they move now, you know. Oh, it's a tidy walk. Hey, didn't you have a bit of a sector with hers only? You know, Mark Baldwin's old girlfriend. That's all over and done, we know. What do you say? Shall we treat ourselves to two penitent bus after we've had us coffee? Yeah, smash it. Be a change. <laughs> Smell of <the> flowers. <laughs> well, you picked yourself a good-looking lad. Got a good job and all finishing halfway through this afternoon. Oh, he was <laughs> at it till half past eight last night. <laughs> I'm only kidding him, love. But now that I've met your husband officially, I can do what I came for. Even though I didn't get an invitation to the wedding. Oh, um... oh, it's all right, lovey. I'm still kidding you. Don't worry. I know how things must have been for you. Aye, and how they're going to be and all. It's no easy time for these kids getting married, is it, Mrs Ogden? No, it certainly isn't. Here, I'm just nipping next door to get some up for us teas. You're stopping, aren't you? Hi. Oh, here, I forgot. That's Mrs Ogden, that carrier bag, Kevin. Yeah. Well, now that you've got two extra mouths to feed, I thought yeah. a few choice uh, fruit and veg wouldn't oh. come amiss. Oh. And there's a tin or two a luncheon meeting there, it'll do for us tea. Oh, well, you shouldn't have spent money on all this. Spent now, Mrs Ogden. I'm a greengrocer. I had a daft and an all. God, oh, I've forgotten to give you a wedding present. There you are. That's me, that is. Too idle to go and choose a proper wedding present, so spend it on whatever you want to, you know, such as it is. Fifty pound? Oh, Uncle Tom, are you sure? Yeah, I only wish it could have been more, lass. Oh. Thanks very much. Oh, you're definitely stopping for your tea, you are. Tell you the truth, Mrs Ogden, I'll open it and have that effect. <laughs> Right, there's the deposit. You do deliver, don't you? Oh, yes, the van boy will bring them all round. I, uh, I heard about your fire. You got over it, did you? Oh, yes. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> they'll, they'll be smashing them flowers, won't they? They've been wasted on the old place. How's Mark's tummy? Oh, fine. I think he was just playing up. Only there's a Punch and Judy man down at play school. It's a bit of a special occasion. So would he like to come and see him? Oh, I'm sure if he's not feeling better already, that'll do the trick. Yeah, Jane will be back soon, so I can come collect him. Mark! There's a Punch and Judy man at play school. Uh, do you want to go with Auntie Sandra? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Come on, then. Let's make you presentable. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're through, aren't we? Yes, thanks very much. <laughs> Was that Mike Baldwin's little lamb? Yes. That's what you get if you don't behave yourself. Oh. Haven't you got any that say, sorry, I miss your birthday? No, I'm afraid we haven't. Oh, you children mad with me. Who is this? A girlfriend? No, it's my auntie Margaret. It's today and I forgot. Oh. Yeah, I'll get that with the dogs on. She likes dogs. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, hey, are you following me? Oh, are you? No. Oh, it must be me following you then. <laughs> hey, can we run tonight? Oh, can I go with my auntie tonight? It's her birthday. Oh. Oh, it's my musical appreciation tomorrow. Hey, can I take you to school with me? Hey, don't. It's silly, Jenny. Hey, I'm only having him on. Good. 
It's all the same I could do with you, though. You're the only one who gives me any confidence. Hey, don't be daft. Stand on your own feet. You're perfectly capable of doing it on your own. Just get up there and show them. See? Here, we go for a cup of tea. We give me a shower and papers are ready. Aye, go on. Ta. See ya. Come Bye. on. Bye. See ya. Thanks a lot. Bye. See ya. What you're worried about. He's a nice lad. There's a world of difference between an 18 year old lad who's left school and a 15 year old girl who hasn't. And I'm responsible for her. And I'm frightened to death of anything going wrong. So don't interfere, please. Mm, sorry. a nice name. Susan's bringing out a new range of children's wear and she's looking for a couple of models. And would you believe it? She fancies my Natasha and your Mark. Oh, what do you think? Oh, I'm flattered. Don't know about Mark, though. He's a bit tough for a male model. Oh, no, all the better. So if it's all right with you, I'll take him over to Susan's place after play school tomorrow. OK? No problem. I only hope he doesn't start a fight. He'll be as good as gold. Don't let this fool you. You'll have to watch Natasha, too. She can be a handful when she puts her mind to it. Can't you? Be a handful. <laughs> well, I'll take a chance. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'll see you out. The door's a bit tricky. Right. Come on. Do you want to be a male model? Yeah. Do you want me to put it in the snap box or shall you? Oh, don't tell me you don't pocket the old tip. I mean, when you bring cars back from service and that. That'll be the day. You've got a safe place. Oh, pick them up's easy enough. Two in, two in each hand. I'll need topping up, won't it? Cheers, thanks, Brett. Thank you. How are you? I'm just searching for a drop of the milk of human kindness. It's like trying to get blood out of a stone. It'd have been better if you'd have let me organise that cabaret Jack. thing, you know. This is very nice. Hi, it is. I'm glad I came. Yeah, no, are you? Oh, of course I am. Hey, I can't say I'm sorry. Oh, listen, love, shut up about that. You're worse than your mother, you. I mind if she's got something to moan about. I know he's your father, love, but as God's my judge, one of these days I'll flatten him. Yeah, well, there's a cue for that. <laughs> ah, it's a long and an old. <laughs> uh, didn't you, um, didn't your wife want to come here? She'd have loved to have been with me, Mrs. Ogden. But unhappily, she was taken from me four years ago. Bless her heart and soul. Oh, dear, I am sorry. Of course, I'm in the same boat, you know. There's a lot of us, aren't there? Aye, there are that. I joined the club last year. Aye, ah, you know, these uh, widows and widowers, I thought, in Stockport. We met every Friday night. Got bigger turnouts than county. <laughs> well, it's nice to have a little social life. Well, I quite enjoyed it myself, but then I'm not one for crowds, you know. I mean, this is just nice. Ah, well, you must feel free to come and visit us any time you like. I'm sure Sally would want you to. Well, that'd be sorry you said that, Mrs. Ogden. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, have you always been a greengrocer? Aye, ah, since I left school. My father took me into the shop, but I took it on when he died. And Eaton Norris it is, if you know that part of the world. Aye. It's a, a nice little business, you know, and steady and not, not special, but nice and it goes. Evening. Oh, how do you do? Oh, Percy, this is Mr. Hopwood, Sally's uncle. Oh, pleased to meet you. Oh, Percy Shogden. Community Centre Superintendent, a neighbourhood watch coordinator. Oh, very good. Mm. You look old enough for war. Did you serve at all? Oh, I forgot my foot last three years. Uh, I was in the catering corps myself. Oh, we couldn't have done without you, lads. Why, well, gummy, you couldn't. And what were you in? Oh, it Cheshire's, my county regiment. Machine gunners. Oh. Serve abroad at all? Oh, I did a bit. I joined the battalion in Palestine. And then, of course, it was Syria and Lebanon. And then Sicily and Italy. And then France. And uh, Belgium and Holland. And then finished up in Germany. Oh. We were uh, just discussing family matters, Percy. Well, oh, I'll let you get on with it. We must talk again sometime. Hi, I'd be glad to. Mm. I'd watch your uncle, Tom. Aye. Bit of a nuisance. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's forever butting in. Yeah. One of us, is he? What? Widower. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Ah, he'd be lonely. Get some like that sometimes, you know. Oh, you're too kind, you know. That's his trouble, you know. Now, it's sort, love. It happens to me sometimes, you know. It's only natural. You know, when you're on your own and you... You see, take a Sunday, for instance, when you're on your own all day at the house and then you go out at night to a pub for a drink. Well, you can't sit by yourself in a corner all night, so you butt in, you know. 
And sometimes you're welcome, sometimes you're not. But you do it. Mrs. Ogden um, knows what I mean. Mind you, not that I'm saying you do out like that yourself. But you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, I do, yes. Oh. And I agree with what you say. Hey, be daft if you didn't, Mrs. Ogden. He knows everything, my good Tom. Oh, come on, love. There are one or two things I'm not sure of. Hey, uh, what's the capital of Brazil? And would you believe it? He just hit on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> to get Betsy booking for Christmas Carol. Well, isn't this a pub concert? Oh, well, it's just one or two turns, you know, nothing special. So. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, come on, love, you know what I do every Christmas. That's the only time of year I take a proper holiday, you know. I have a friend of mine looks after its shop. I set myself off down to my daughter's in Eastbourne. I don't see her and kids very often with it being so far away, like, you know. Oh, you've got grandchildren, have you? Oh, aye, aye, a boy and a girl. Oh, same as me. Aye. I don't see much of mine, neither. And they grow up so fast, don't they? Don't they just, eh? Anyway, now I've found out where you are, I'll come and see you more often. Oh, you must, Uncle Tom. You'll be very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Hey, he's a widower. Got one daughter in Eastbourne. Yes. She's got a boarding house down there. He's going down to see her over Christmas and New Year. I think, I think Hilda's after it. <laughs> well, good luck to her. <laughs> hey, listen, have you heard from your Muriel yet? No. Give her a chance. She'll have cash, eh? She has. She's been in Vancouver a week. Not supposed to here out, though. I won't for a month or two. She's no letter writer. Hey, heaven knows when I'll see her again. Well, you're better off without them. Um, oh. Do you know there's times I wish I'd hurried off it to Canada? <laughs> Honestly, the more trouble at home. Yeah. Uh, I heard for another. Yes, I was wondering when that person of yours was going to happen. Same again. Yeah. I wonder how Madame Baldwin went on with them kids. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Hey. What for? Well, it'd be a bit of fun. Hey, what are you still doing here? Oh, just finishing off a bit of work. I've got this wife of mine who's driving me dotty over this daft scheme of hers, but, uh, well, now my girlfriend's here. Eh, you sound too good at that. How many girlfriends have you had? Has Mark Baldwin ever seen that little lad of his? Not as far as I know. She's a right madam, that one. Mm. Really laid the law down. Stay away from my kid or else. Oh, a fine way to talk to his father. She said it. She <laughs> meant it and all. Good. Look. I'm glad you had a good day. Now stop worrying about tomorrow. What do you think I'm going to do with these kids? Clip them round the ear? I love kids. Yeah, well, you better love these two. I will, I will. Ask yourself this. If I didn't love kids, why am I so keen to have one of my own, eh? Come on, answer. See, you can't think, eh? <laughs> The streets back on Monday and don't miss the omnibus on Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. Well, next on Plus, who lives in a house like this? Find out in Through the Keyhole.